that's really spicy one but if you perfect that you will have no problems with the control pairs it's a uh, hammer time so the next challenge it's called hammer time. Now that's a sequel of first the reactor and then the flinch grinch. So if you're basically combining these two challenges, what we'll do, we're building our control pair. And if you stay really mentally disciplined and you keep everything consistent and absolutely passive and you focus only on a proper trigger control, the grip is going to return the sides back to alignment and the stance is going to return that alignment back to the same point of aim. If you do that right, that means that you'll hit the one inch circle and four yards. Actually, we'll do a control pair on that one inch circles. Now, we try to avoid to be lucky. So we'll search for consistent performance. That means you need to do it five times in a row. So you will shoot one repetition on each dot on each target in the row. You need to complete the row. Now you can take a rest, you can reholster the gun in safe manner of course, relax a little bit and narrow your focus for the next repetition. The key, again, very consistent and unchanged grip pressure stiffness in your rest and the proper trigger control. I will hardly emphasize one of the concepts that we use, emphasizing the principle number one, which is isolation of the action of the finger. Only finger moves, but how? With the constant speed of the actual press with the minimal effort. The key here is to understand that fast trigger manipulation doesn't come from how quickly you pull the trigger, but from how soon you reset and prep the trigger after the first shot, then pull it again smoothly at a consistent speed. At the same time, it's crucial to maintain a consistent grip, meaning the pressure should be unchanged before, during and after the shot. Stay passive and trust that the stiffness in your wrist will naturally realign the sights. Avoid intentionally pulling the gun back into alignment. Instead, trust your proper grip and stance. If they are correctly built, you will achieve accurate hits. The biggest problem is at the moment that you pull really fast in order to catch the time to be really fast, you're creating an impulse and you start with speed, let's say four miles per hour, and you finish with the 25 miles per hour. That will create an impulse that will be manifested by sympathetic squeeze of the rest of the fingers. Guess what will happen? Accuracy will suffer dramatically. And of course, we'll be completely outside of the dot and there will be consequences. The goal is to get it into that one inch circle. If you get it into the one inch circle or break the line of the one inch circle, your score is your time. If you break the line of the ghost circle, that adds a quarter second to your time. If you miss completely, that adds 2.5 seconds. Plus the time that you achieved, that dramatically will increase your time and you will affect your result. So give it a try, that's really spicy one, but if you perfect that, you will have no problems with the control pairs. You will achieve mastery. As we've already mentioned, the distance is four yards from the target. The target consists of five one-inch dots. Each dot is encircled by a larger 1.5-inch ghost ring. Begin with your handgun already aimed at the target with the trigger slack or pre-travel taken up. This means you're ready to fire without needing to pull the trigger back too far. Upon hearing the acoustic signal from the timer, fire a controlled pair, two shots, 
at a single dot. The aim is to land both shots within the one inch circle of the dot. Perform this action once for each of the five dots in a row of your choice. You will complete a total of five individual repetitions, each of a different dot to finish the row. All right, that's a point six one, two four, first one, point three seven. Second one was a little bit high. Actually, it's not so high, but it's a little bit to the to the right. That will cost me a point twenty five penalty. Point sixty seven, point three zero for the shot, and that's a toucher. So it's in and 0.37 is the split. That's 0 0.67, 0 0.28 for the shot, 0.39 is the split between the first and second shot. That's 0 0.73, 0 0.73, 0 0.36 for a shot. It's a little bit, uh, it's not the best reaction time. I can improve that. And 0.37 is the split between the shots, which is pretty good and pretty consistent. And now we have the last target. Point 0.55, which is awesome time. 0.23 is the reaction time. And 0.36 is the split between the first and the second shot. Scoring. The final score will be defined by the aggregate time from the five individual runs divided by five, which will give the average time. It's not too bad. Obviously, there's a room for uh, improvement. I'm still pretty happy with this run. That challenge is quite spicy. It, uh, actually narrow your mental focus and awareness and actually it's uh, emphasizing your mental discipline you need to stay very consistent with the grip with the stiffened wrist you need to focus on the proper trigger control when you pull the trigger at the moment that you create an impulse you're actually causing a sympathetic squeeze with the rest of the fingers and that definitely will have a negative result on the target. So the only one that will take under consideration here is the first run that went a little bit high. That means I didn't wait enough for the gun to return back to sight alignment. So more visual patient. If you like the video, visit the online training page on our website or check the calendar section to sign up for our in-person courses. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.